from Hollywood, the Hollywood Radio Theater. Starring Rosalind Russell and Robert Young in Goodbye, My Fancy. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, let's introduce tonight's play, Goodbye, My Fancy. It's a scintillating comedy from Warner Brothers with glamorous Rosalind Russell and that distinguished actor, Robert Young. Now, act one of Goodbye, My Fancy, starring Rosalind Russell as Agatha Reed and Robert Young as Jim Merrill. In 1950, among the members of the United States Congress, few are more widely respected, and certainly none is more attractive than the Honorable Agatha Reed. Miss Reed has just returned to her office, slightly battle-worn after another harrowing day in the cause of better government. All right, Woody, what's the mail? Another thousand or so letters. Make another speech like that last one, and you'll get the post office out of the red. What's this one? Oh, invitation. It's from Good Hope College. You know I haven't time to... Why, it's from Good Hope. Yeah, that's what I said. Then you said... Woody, they... They want to give me an honorary degree. Well, what's so special about that? You turned down Wellesley without blinking an eye. But you don't understand. I... I went to Good Hope. Oh, pardon me. Take a letter. Shall I type it on parchment? Special delivery. Uh, to Dr. James Merrill, President, Good Hope College, Good Hope, Massachusetts. My dear Jim, I can't tell you how... No, 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 you better make that dear Dr. Merrill. I can't tell you how happy I was to receive your gracious invitation to return to Good Hope for an honorary degree. Good Hope has always been close to me. And nothing short of a congressional crisis will keep me away. And if I may be sentimental... It would give me great pleasure to be able to stay in my old room. Sincerely, Agatha Reed. Oh, good morning, Mr. Griswold. Is he in? Dr. Merrill, in his office. I, I believe he's alone, Mr. Griswold. Perhaps I'd Never better... mind, I'm going in. Jim, I've got to talk to you. Good. Well, sit down, won't you? <laughs> Last night, I wrote a letter to Agatha Reed, as chairman of the Board of Trustees. I thought it would be nice to let her know how happy we all are that she accepted your invitation. Well, that was very thoughtful and of you. And ten minutes after the letter was mailed, my wife told me. Your wife told you what? That she used to be Agatha Reed's classmate. That Agatha Reed was expelled for staying out all night. Uh, yes, yes, she was. We're giving an honorary degree to a woman who was once expelled? Now, look, Jim, we're going to call the whole thing off. I'm afraid it's too late for that, Claude. I've given the announcement to the papers. And Real Magazine is sending a man up to cover the commencement. Real Magazine? Oh, that's great. If they ever find out about her being expelled, we'll all wind up on the cover. There were a dozen women to choose from, but you've got to pick a hot potato like Agatha Reed. Why? Well, Good Hope meted out some pretty harsh punishment to her. I think it's time we told her we were sorry. What's more, she's one of the most outstanding women in the nation. A woman who's won recognition as a columnist, war correspondent, and author. We've got to go through with it, huh? Yes, and stop worrying. Then it's entirely in your hands, Jim. She's your baby till after commencement. Thank you, Claude. I find the prospect very interesting. <laughs> Well, go on home, Woody. Our train doesn't leave until midnight. Oh, you can meet me at the station. Oh, oh, wh what about my warm milk? Room service is sending it up. Maybe I should tell him to put it in a baby bottle. Meaning what? This trip back to the cradle. A crowded calendar, two important bills coming out of committee, election month, only four months away, and we're off to braid a daisy chain at some college. Now, look, Woody. I am going to enjoy this weekend. I am going to be sentimental. I am going to cry. I'm going to walk barefoot down memory lane with ivy entwined in my hair. And if you don't like it, you don't have to look. I'll bring my dark glasses. Do that. Oh, well, leave that door unlocked there for room service, will you? 
Uh, the, the door's open. Just put the milk on the table, please. Just milk today. No butter, eggs, yummy yogurt. Matt! <laughs> That's right, Maggie. Real Magazine's favorite, Stogber, and yours. Matt! You just said that. The usual greeting after five years is, well, this is a surprise. Oh, I'm sorry, but you caught me off guard. I didn't think that was possible. I see you haven't changed. No, neither have you. A little more dignified, perhaps. A little more, shall we say, uh, Rafine. <laughs> Just as attractive as ever. I I thought you were in Europe. I got back this afternoon. I thought I'd find out about that date we had in Paris. When you didn't show up for five years, I began to wonder. Is it on or off? I'm sure you didn't come up here to dig all that up. Do you mind telling me why you didn't show up? Well, does it matter of now? it matters. When a woman runs out on a man, he ought to know why. Helps him the next time. Mm, I suppose it never occurred to you that I might have been in love with someone else. It occurred to me, but I rejected it. Really? Why? Because I've kept tabs on you, Aggie. That hasn't been hard, not for the congresswoman. Congratulations, you're doing a great job. What about before I was the congresswoman? Well, those were my years. And the years before that? Oh, uh -huh. well, why haven't you done something about the guy? Well, maybe I will. Now, do you mind that? I'm in the midst of packing, and I want you to leave. Say, did you ever get those pictures I sent you from China? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Did you like the one of yourself? the one on the Orient Express nearing Paris. No, I didn't like it. <laughs> Why not? Well, the one time you don't expect to be photographed is to sleep in a train compartment. Besides, the occasion was exactly not the kind of thing I wanted recorded for posterity. That's funny. I thought it had the makings of one of the big moments in history. Come to think of it, you did too. Matt, please. It was fun, but war has a way of making little moments seem big at the time. Very penetrating. May I quote you sometime? Well, I'm sorry if I said it badly, but it's true. We were, well... You were a nice snapshot, but never a family portrait. Yeah, I get it. It's subtle, but I get it. Well, now, you've got to go now. I have to catch the New Yorker at midnight. The New Yorker? Yes, yes, and I haven't packed a thing the to do. The New York. Yorker? Here, I've been holding you up with idle chit-chat, and all the time we're going to be traveling companions. You're going to be on that train? Happy, happy coincidence, just like the good old Orient Express. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, I know what trains do to some people. <laughs> so long, Aggie. I'll see you on the New Yorker. A Western Union, please. This is Agatha Reed. Oh, yes, I, I want to send a straight wire to Dr. James Amaro. Good Hope College, Good Hope, Massachusetts. Oh, ha have you got that? Please don't have anyone meet me at train. Have decided to come by plane. Sign it, Agatha Reed. Thank you. Yes? Room service, Miss Reed. Oh, come in. Your warm milk, Miss Reed. I've changed my mind. Just, uh, just bring a double brandy. <laughs> So this is it, huh? Dear old school days. Would he... Would he just look? Oh, this wonderful, wonderful dormitory. My old rooms. The same furniture. The same pictures. Everything just as it was. Looks fierce, doesn't it? You know what those girls told me? They moved all these things up from the basement just for me. Oh, I haven't cried in years. It feels wonderful. Uh, if you're such a big shot, how come nobody bothered to meet you? Because I purposely stopped the taxi two blocks away. That was memory lane we walked through. That alfalfa field is memory lane. Oh, I'm sorry for you, Moody. I really am. It, if you don't have something to remember like this. Come in. I'm sorry to bother you, Miss Reed. Oh, I'm the one who should be sorry, dear, putting you out of your rooms like this. Oh, no, no. Mary Nell and I think it's the greatest honor we've ever known. It's this, Miss Reed, your book, Women in the Vanguard. Uh, if you'll pardon me, Agatha, I'll run out and tear down some ivy for my hair. A wreath, you know. Woody, really? Oh, now, now, what about the book? Well, Dr. Pitt said we all ought to read it. Oh, your political science teacher? No, physics. Well, in his classes, you learn about everything. Sounds as if I'd like to know him. I was wondering if... If you'd autograph it for me. Well, I'd love to. Now, uh, what name do I write? Virginia. Oh, would you make it Ginny? Uh, Ginny Merrill. Ginny Merrill. Will your parents be here for commencement? Well, there's just my father. Mother died a few years ago. Oh, does your father have to come very far? <laughs> oh, no. As a matter of fact... You're he... Jim Merrill's daughter, aren't you? Why, yes. Well, I might have known. I, I, I knew your father very well. He was my favorite professor. 
What was he like, Miss Reed? Oh, he was very handsome. All the girls were in love with him. They still are. That's not what I meant. Was he a good teacher? Mm, he was a wonderful teacher. I wish he were still a teacher. Oh? Is being president of a college so bad? Well, it's different. Different? Uh, I'd better be going, Miss Reed. Is it all right if I tell my father you're here? I I'm sure he must be anxious to see you. Well, perhaps I'd better walk over to his office. Oh, no, no. He'll want to call on you. And thanks again, Miss Reed. Oh, oh, I excuse me. That's all right. That's all right. We just had a phone call. Real Magazine. They're covering your weekend here. Oh, how nice. Oh, it's better than that. They're sending Matt Cole. Who did you say? Matt Cole, the war photographer. You're joking. Why should they send him here? This isn't his type of thing at all. Yeah, but why the blood pressure? Get Real Magazine on the phone immediately. I'll put a stop to this right now. Why bother? I want to bother, and don't argue. Okay. Uh, hello, get me New York. Yeah, Real Magazine. Uh, I want to speak to Mr. Bronson personally. Uh, make that person to person to Mr. Bronson. That's right, he owns the magazine. Is this a matter of life and death? I ask you not to argue. Just get Bronson on that phone. I, I can't. The circuits are busy. Give me the phone. <laughs> hello. Hello, this is Agatha Reed. Now, on that call to Real Magazine, it's most important. This is a crisis. I'd appreciate it. Please, if you get everything you possibly can do, I can get it. Come in. Jim. Uh, it's been a long time, Agatha. Twenty years. I, uh... I'm taking advantage of my position. The entire college is waiting to meet you. I'm overcome. I... I mean it, Jim. My daughter mentioned your secretary was with you. Woody's downstairs with the telephone operator. There's an important call I'm trying to put through. I'm glad we're alone. Ah, you're looking very well, Agatha. Thank you, Jim. I suppose you realize you're in for quite a weekend. Yes, I... I've seen the agenda. We start in an hour with your official reception. I, uh, I can turn my back if you'd like to escape. I wouldn't think of it. Vanity, I guess. I, I suppose everyone dreams of coming back for an honorary degree. That's a popular ambition, like, well, uh, like wanting a mink coat. Yeah. Or to be president. Yes. How does it feel? Well, it's never dull. The faces change so often. And with so much youth around, you actually get the feeling you're preserving your own. Well, your daughter should keep you young. She's a lovely child. No, no, that, that's, that's wrong. She's not a child. What are we at that age, Jim? That wonderful, terrible in-between age. You've seen so many of us. Hmm. Uh, tell me about yourself, Agatha. Have you been happy? Well, I, I, I've been busy. Yes, I've followed your career very closely. Well, in that case, I won't have to bring you up to date on the past 20 years. No, only the first year. I've never quite caught up with that first year. I, I've wondered what happened, why you just... Disappeared. Well, it was very stupid of me to get caught climbing in my window at five in the morning. <laughs> I hope the girls are more expert now. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm not up on the statistics. Oh, listen, Jim. It would have made no difference to the trustees that you were the man, that we were planning to be married. I would have been kicked out anyway. Only you would have been kicked out with me. I thought we decided to take that chance. Well, I couldn't let you do it. They were already eyeing you for the presidency. Well, where did you go? My letters came back. When I phoned your home, they said they didn't know where you were. Yes, I... I made them promise. <laughs> Once I weakened and started to write you a letter. I, I never did finish it. I, and later on, I, I read about your marriage. Did Jenny tell you anything about her mother? No. She was a wonderful woman. We had a lot of things in common. That helped to balance the things we didn't have. She... she died four years ago. Why did you feel that you had to tell me that? I don't know exactly, I suppose. I, uh... What are you trying to say, Jim? Well, you came up here this weekend. Why? Well, don't you remember? You, you invited me. <laughs> I carried that invitation around for two years before I sent it. Oh, that was silly, Jim. I answered it as soon as I got it. Bronson's in Chicago. I just... Oh, sorry if I interrupted. That's quite all right. I was just leaving. Uh, Dr. Merrill, my secretary, and my right arm, Miss Woods. How do you do? How do you do? Miss Reed, did I tell you it's wonderful to have you back? Yes, Dr. Merrill, uh, but it's good to hear it again. I'll see you at the reception. There'll be a committee calling for you at 4 o'clock. Oh, it's nice to have you here, too, Miss Woods. Oh, thank you. 
Plexi's nice looking, isn't he? Yes. Looked mighty cozy just now. Talking over old history exams. You know what's wrong with you? You're so used to having your thumb in every Washington pie that you can't... Stop filibustering. <sighs> All right, Woody. It's so. What so? Just what you're thinking. Oh? He's the first man I ever loved. He... He's what? Maybe the only one. The truth is I'd marry him tomorrow if he asked me. You're kidding, aren't you? What's the matter? Are you against marriage, too? Of course not. But you're smack in the middle of an election campaign and a hundred other things. Your life is too busy. There's quite a difference between a busy life and a full one. Life. I thought you'd be happy for me. Well, what do you expect? I don't even know the well, guy. Well, I know him. Now, this isn't just a whim, Woody. This is something I waited for and thought about for 20 years. Maybe the most important thing in my whole life. That's why I don't want anything to spoil it. That's why I... What about that phone call? Phone call? Yeah, Bronson, Real Magazine. Oh, that. They're expecting him back at his hotel. Anything I can do? Oh, all right, Matt. Come in. Now, what do you think you're doing here? My job. I'm a photographer. You don't expect me to believe they picked you for an assignment like this, do you? As a matter of fact, I asked for it. Mm. I had a great idea for a layout. The Honorable Agatha Reed and how she grew. Now, don't try anything. I'm warning you, Matt. Yes, Bel ma'am. Uh, this is my secretary, Miss Woods. Hi. Real pleasure. Oh, uh, would you mind directing me to the president's office? Why? I'm supposed to check in with the old codger. Oh, you'll probably find the old codger in the administration building. Yeah, and where might that be? Woody. Let's go, Mr. Cole. Thanks, Woody. I wouldn't want him to get lost. If I do, I'll send up a flare. I'll, I'll get it. Hello? Oh, yes, Mr. Bronson. We've been trying all over to find you. Um, I mean, uh... Well? Well, say something. Uh, we, um, we just wanted to tell you we, uh... We decided to renew our subscription. You can tell me something, Mr. Cole. Why was the Honorable so upset about you coming up here? She thinks I'm in the employ of a foreign government. Oh, come on, give. You're about as innocent as a rattlesnake. All right, I'm here because I think she's on the verge of making a big mistake. What kind of mistake? For a man, there's only one kind of mistake a woman can make, another man. Why should that bother you? Well, that shouldn't be hard for a smart girl like you to figure out. Oh, no. Now I know who you are. You're up here to make trouble. That's who you are. Well, no fisticuffs when we get there. This is supposed to be a happy weekend. When we get there? Wait a minute. Don't tell me he's the president of this seminary. I, uh... I thought you knew. I oh, know. Thanks for telling me. You tricked me. Wild horses wouldn't have dragged that out of me. Oh, forget it. What am I worried about? If I can't take her away from some old Mr. Chips, I'll quit the business. Ha! Huh. What does that mean? Get out that flare, Mr. Cole. You're going to need it. Act two of Goodbye, My Fancy in a moment. You know, I guess just about the most popular sport in the world, everywhere in the world, is fishing. You hear a lot of discussion among American sportsmen, which is better, the dry fly or the wet fly, still fishing or trolling, lake, stream, or ocean. Everyone has his own ideas about this sport of fishing, and he goes after it in his own way. Well, that's true all over the world. As our servicemen have observed, there are a lot of different ways of catching fish. In Borneo, for example, the natives crush the berries of a certain shrub, and the juice poisons the fish of a river without spoiling them as food. In Africa, South America, and Alaska, the spear or harpoon is used. In Japan, trained birds called cormorants are sent diving down into the water to bring up fish. In some Pacific islands, nets are used. In others, the bow and arrow is the favorite method of getting fish for supper. Well, what's true about fishing is true about other customs and traditions around the world. A way of doing things may be different, but the ideals are the same. No one way is right or wrong. It's just what suits the individuals best. These customs are important to the people who follow them, and our servicemen are helping to maintain goodwill by observing the customs of other people in other lands. Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Goodbye, My Fancy, starring Rosalind Russell as Agatha and Robert Young as Jim with Whitfield Connor as Matt. The faculty reception in honor of Agatha Reed is in full progress. Among those present are Matt Cole and a professor of physics named Dr. Pitt. 
Going for a cup of punch, Mr. Cole? Oh, thanks. You were. Uh, you have to go through this every year? Occupational hazard. Well, I'm rather enjoying it. You mean it can be worse than this? It's just that this is my last faculty reception. Good Hope and I will soon be going our separate ways. I haven't been exactly happy under the present management. Dr. Merrill? Oh, no. Claude Griswold, our illustrious chairman of the board. Meanwhile, Mr. Cole, let's drink to Saturday morning. What's for Saturday morning? That's when I'll be asked to resign. I shall take my departure in a blaze of futile glory. You're going to blow up the physics building? Not exactly. But there will be an explosion of a kind. What kind, Dr. Pitt? That's my little secret, Mr. Cole. Punch not very stimulating, is it? You're wrong, Dr. Pitt. I feel a noticeable lift. As a matter of fact, I... Hmm. Something wrong, Mr. Cole? Well, it seems our guest of honor has disappeared. If I'm not mistaken, I saw Miss Reed and Dr. Merrill walk out there on the terrace just a moment ago. Well, now that should make a charming picture for the magazine. Excuse me, Dr. Pitt. I suppose I had no right to take you out here, Agatha. But there won't be many opportunities to be alone. And there's so much I want to say. We had the same problem 20 years ago, Jim, until we discovered the amphitheater. Remember? I was just about to suggest it. The uh, usual time? <laughs> the reception will be over by then. The usual time. Thank you for remembering. How could I ever... Oh, uh, Mr. Cole. I first started you, Doctor, but the layout wouldn't be complete without a picture of the president and his number one graduate. Well, it might have been a better picture if you'd given us a little warning. Mr. Cole specializes in catching people off guard. Oh, there you are, Jim. Now look, I've been working on Jeff Barnes. He's just about ready to walk. He's just about ready to walk. He's just about ready to walk. He's just about ready to walk over for the new library. I'll talk to him in the morning, Claude. Take my word for it and do it now. But we were just... I'll be all right, Jim. Oh, Mr. Griswold, your wife was telling me that you just gave the college a projection room and motion picture equipment. I don't mind saying it cost me a young fortune. Uh, Claude's one of the best friends this college ever had. Agatha. I'm uh, honored, Mr. Griswold. You see, Miss Shackelford was saying that my film will be the first to be shown. Your film? Oh, it's just something I assembled a couple of years ago to illustrate a lecture. Miss Shackelford thought it might interest some of the students. Sounds fine, Miss Reed, fine. Well, uh, Jim? Uh, yes, of course. We mustn't let Mr. Barnes cool off. <laughs> Heavy odor of orange blossoms in the air. You haven't wasted a minute, have you, Matt? Merrill must be quite a guy to keep a woman like you on the hook for 20 years. Yes, he is. Quite a guy. Or else you must be getting tired. Oh, what does that mean? This overwhelming desire to return to the past. Girlhood memories. Old rooms and dormitories. Old furniture. Old sweetheart. Old hat. You've been on the war fronts for so long that a decent atmosphere is bound to seem a little incongruous. Are you kidding, Aggie? Take a good look around. This is a lost world up here, and Merrill's a perfect president for it. That penetrating analysis of Jim Merrill is based on one, how do you do? Is it? You used to be a good reporter. Talk to some of the teachers. Dr. Pitt, for example. You might get an earful. <laughs> The old amphitheater, Agatha. It looks just the same, doesn't it? Just the same. I was late, wasn't I? <laughs> a little. On my way, Dr. Pitt stopped me. He said you had quite a talk with him. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. I was meddling. I had no right to. In this case, you had every right. Well, what did you tell him? Is he going to resign? No, I asked him to remain here. That's what you expected, isn't it? <laughs> That's what I hoped for. But what about Mr. Griswold? Well, I imagine there'll be some tearing of hair... But I'm sure I can manage the situation so that both sides appear to win. Jim. Remember the last time we were here? We were very young, very much in love. And you proposed to me. Agatha, if I were to ask you again, is there any chance your answer might be the same? Oh, always on second proposal. This time you won't run away. No. And then I can tear this up. It's the note you left for me. You kept it. I've never quite forgiven myself for introducing you to the beauties of Walt Whitman. Goodbye, my fancy. Farewell, dear mate, dear love. The note... May I have it? Thank you. Hello, my fancy. 
Ay, Dios mío. Aggie? What is the name? Oh, chill. That's the answer I always get. Well, I'll stick it out for a couple hours longer. If she doesn't show up by morning, I'm leaving. Got it bad, haven't you? Look, I'm not being nosy. I think Aggie's making a mistake, too. I don't just work for this woman. I like her. I care what happens to her. So do I. What was it with you and Aggie, anyway? Well, I hadn't seen her since the day Paris was liberated. Before that, not for months. I was going to ask her to marry me. We made a date for that night. I rustled up eight red roses, a bottle of champagne, and a ring. I tore the petals off the roses and sprinkled them in the doorway. Put the ring at the bottom of the glass. She'd drink the champagne, see the ring, catch on that I was proposing. Nice idea, wasn't it? Yes, very. Only Aggie never showed up. Well, the evening wasn't entirely wasted. I learned something that's been invaluable to me ever since. Do you know it only takes three hours for roses to turn brown around the edges? I'm sorry, Cole. What are you sorry about? Now that I've seen her dreamboat in action, I'm not worried. He's a memory. Something she pressed in a book through the years like an old rose. You're expecting an awful lot of her in one short weekend. That's why I'm going to give her a little help. Right before your very eyes, I'm going to turn that memory into a man. Very clever, if it works. You leaving? Wouldn't you rather? I hear the approach of familiar footsteps. Well, good evening. I was just about to put a light in the window. Well, I'm glad you didn't bother. I know exactly where I'm going. Good night, Matt. I want to talk to you, Aggie. Oh, yes, yes, of course. About Dr. Pitt. You'll be very unhappy to hear that any difference of opinion is now a thing of the past. Dr. Pitt will remain here. Well, there's one thing to be said in Arprexia's favor. He doesn't want to lose you. I don't blame him. He's not going to lose me. Then it's all set? All set. Oh, congratulations. Oh, you just can't take it, can you, Matt? That he could be more exciting, more desirable than you. That's right. I'm as vain as the next guy. Since you've gone in for collecting memories, here's another oh. one. Sorry if I smeared your lipstick. Good night, Aggie. <laughs> Mr. Cole. Do come in, Mr. Cole. Good morning, Miss Shackelford. Busy taking pictures, I suppose. That's what I wanted to see you about. Now, you're the student advisor. I, I just want to be sure that I'm at the right place at the right time. Now, let's see. Uh, tomorrow's Saturday. Oh, but uh, tonight. Tonight's the prom and a step sing at Griswold Hall. Step sing? Oh, yeah, yeah. They sing on the step. Uh-huh. But uh, tomorrow morning... I believe Dr. Pitt mentioned something for 11 o'clock. Oh, yes, the film showing, Miss Reed's film. No, no, I don't mean that. Isn't there something else on tap? Why, no, nothing. Well, now, there must be. Mr. Cole, there will be nothing at 11 o'clock tomorrow but Miss Reed's motion picture. Anyone seen it yet? No, I don't think so. Oh, yes, Dr. Pitt. It was at his suggestion that I sent for it. Dr. Pitt? Oh, fine. Uh, Miss Shackelford, where can I find Mr. Griswold? Mr. Griswold? Well, I'd be glad to show you, Mr. Cole. Now, you just come with me. I would have stopped by sooner, Agatha, but something came up. I just wanted to remind you about the prom tonight. Jim, are you sure that's all? No, I just couldn't wait that long to see you. <laughs> Did Griswold reach you? He phoned here some time ago. I, uh, I've just come from his house. I, he asked about that film of mine. He, he seemed a little concerned. Well, yes, a little. I, I'm terribly sorry, darling, but I forgot to ask you anything about the picture. Well, do you think I'd have brought anything here unsuitable? Oh, Agatha, of course not. Jim, I've spent five years in Europe. I saw what happened in those countries where freedom was destroyed. That's what the film's about. Actual newsreel shots of some of the dreadful things that have happened in our time. How they burned the books, how they hanged the teachers by their feet because they dared to teach the truth. Do you think I want to see that happen here? I'm not questioning it at all. It's just that these are touchy times, so Claude feels we ought to have a look at it. It's a shame Mr. Cole had to bring it up. Cole? But... Well, yes. Claude said that Cole had stopped by to take a picture. He happened to mention the film to Claude. Well, what does he say about it? He praised it very highly. But when he said that Dr. Pitt had liked it, too. Well, 
Claude got a little worried. It's funny. It's really funny. Oh, darling, believe me, we'll straighten it out. I don't need to see the picture. I know it's all right. Besides, there's something the matter with my eyes. Oh? I can't seem to see anything but you. <sighs> About the prom, wait for me here, dear. I'll pick you up. Yes, Jim, of course. <laughs> Miss Reed, may I come in? Jenny, of course, dear. Well, shouldn't you be getting dressed for the prom? Miss Reed, is it a good picture, the one they're showing tomorrow? Well, naturally, I'd think so. Why? Well, they're having a meeting about it at my father's house, and... and... Oh, well, what are you trying to tell me, Jenny? Well, some people think the president of a college has the right to make decisions on things, but, but he doesn't. He has to check everything with the trustees. Whatever he may feel himself just doesn't matter. You mean they may not run the film? <laughs> My father's done wonderful things for the school. Seven new buildings in ten years. Isn't that something to be proud of? I'm so proud I could... <laughs> oh, no, it's all right, Jenny. It's all right. <laughs> oh, I'm so ashamed. My father's a coward, Miss Reed. He's so afraid of losing his job. He, he's lost everything he ever believed in. How do you know he isn't fighting them on this? Because he's forgotten how to fight. Oh, Miss Reed, you, you just don't understand. Uh, I want to tell you something, Jenny. Something I'm sure you don't know. I was expelled from this college. You were... what? Expelled because I stayed out all night with a man. We were very much in love and planning to be married. But I ran away so I wouldn't hurt his chances of becoming president. He had strength and integrity and courage. He still has. So let's not turn away from him now just when he needs us most. Miss Reed. Oh, I should have known. Whenever he talked about you, he, he was different. And I never really gave him up. I just needed someone else to believe in him, too. Now, you'd better go and get dressed for the prom. Oh, thank you, Miss Reed. Thank you. Agatha, you... You look beautiful. Thank you. And what's more, I'm already surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Your arm, Miss Reed. Oh. Oh, Jim, imagine going to a prom again. Uh, Claude and Ellen stopped by. They thought we might as well make it a force. Of course. They're downstairs. Hey! Oh, it's just like old times, isn't it, Dad? Hello, Ellie. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Griswold. Now, that's what I call a charming couple. <laughs> Ellie, if you didn't forget my pills, my stomach's murdering me. Oh, I knew it. If you hadn't got so upset at the movie, you wouldn't have had to call the meeting and... Oh! Uh, that's too bad, Mr. Griswold. Sounds like it's all my fault. Oh, I, I didn't mean that, Ag. It, it's just that we were late for dinner, and Claude just gulped. How it. did you like the movie, Mr. Griswold? Well, it's no Abbott and Costello. Uh, they're Claude's favorite. I guess that Claude realizes what you tried to accomplish with the film. And sure, he... I do. Why show college kids this kind of stuff? Time enough to start worrying when they're out of college. That's a very interesting theory of education, Mr. Griswold. Is it yours? I leave theories to experts here, like Jim. All I care about, frankly, is protecting the minds of the young people well, you're here. You're not protecting them, Mr. Griswold. You're destroying them. A college is where the future of the world begins, and professors aren't uh, intellectual babysitters. It's their job to bring some light into this muddled world, and you've put a stop to that. The result is the girls who graduate tomorrow aren't prepared for the world they'll have to face, yet you're content to hand it to them and say, fight for it, die for it. But don't attempt to understand it. Miss Reed, I think we know what's best for our school. Claude, please let me handle this. There's no handling to it, Jim. And we might as well tell her now. Miss Reed, we've canceled the showing of the film. I see. And Dr. Merrill, did he agree? On vital issues, the president and the trustees always agree. Now, suppose we get over to the prom. Claude, uh, you and Ellen go ahead. I I I'd like to speak to Miss Reed alone. Well, don't be too long. It wouldn't look well if you were late. Oh, oh, dear. Forget it, Ellie. Now she knows just how we feel. 
And when Jim turns on the old charm... Oh, excuse me, uh, have you seen Miss Reed? Uh, the man from the magazine, isn't it? That's right. Uh, Miss Reed's inside, but I don't think you'd better disturb her right now. Come along, Elliot. Thanks a lot. I'll, uh, I'll just wait for her here. I know how you must feel, Agatha, but you must give me a chance to explain. Jim, Jim, did you see the film? Yes. Well, do you think it's wrong for your students to see it? Now, be honest with me. No. A and you didn't stand up and say that? Agatha, I'm just asking you to try to see my position. There are times when I have to bow to... To Claude Griswold? You're exaggerating Claude's importance in this whole affair. Am I? When he and not you seem to be the real judge of what should be taught at this college? He's a businessman. He gives money. He wants his say. It's as simple as that. Why do you look so shocked? I'm not shocked. Just frightened. That you can stand here and say that and accept it. Good heavens, Agatha. I have to run this school. That means getting buildings, endowments. It's part of the job. Suppose I fought Griswold on this to a showdown. It would be an heroic gesture, and I'd be out of here tomorrow. Would you? Oh, you used to love a fight like that. Well, things are quite different now. I, I have Ginny to think about. Oh, there's no need to lie to me. I've talked to Ginny. And if you're not careful, you're going to lose her. I don't know how important that is to you, but I suspect it's very important. What have you been telling her? Oh, dreadful things, that you have courage, integrity. And I didn't just say it, Jim, I believe it. Stand up to Griswold. Not for me, not even for Ginny, but for yourself. All right, Jim. I know when I'm beaten. I I'm going to offer you a deal, a, a business deal. That's more in your line. What are you talking about? A few minutes ago, I assured your daughter that you'd run that film tomorrow. So I'm afraid you're going to do it, with or without Mr. Griswold's consent. Is this your idea of a joke? No, no. And in exchange for that small service, I'll give you my personal guarantee that the article in Real Magazine won't even hint at the colorful events leading up to my expulsion from this seat of higher learning. I... I can't believe Why it. not? You see, Jim, I'm willing to take a chance on you. I know now that you're afraid. And with a man who's afraid, it's just a question of the lesser of two evils. Whether you risk being removed from here by running the film, or whether you accept the certainty of being removed after this story breaks. You'd... you'd really do a thing like that? Oh, you'll learn all kinds of tricks in my work. The most important one being never to play fair unless you respect the men you're dealing with. I'd never believe this could happen. Not after last night. Last night was 20 years ago. Listen, they're playing the alma mater. Very appropriate, isn't it? Look how long, Jim. We'll be late for the prom. In just a few moments now, we'll hear Act Three of Goodbye, My Fancy. You know, every once in a while, the sounds of war yield to a nicer note. Such a one came from Korea, from the 27th Regiment of the 25th Infantry Division. It's an outfit of superb combat soldiers who built a legendary reputation in the Korean fighting. But they built something else along with it. When they were stationed in Osaka, Japan in 1949, they learned that a small orphanage was in bad shape. Poor buildings, little clothing, and no assurance from day to day that there would even be enough food for the more than 150 kids who called it home. Well, the regiment adopted that orphanage. They began to take up collections. They contributed food and medicine and clothing. And when the regiment moved to the Korean battlefront, the work went on. Their first payday in combat, those guys deducted a half million yen and sent it back to Japan for their orphanage. Well, you can bet those kids have never forgotten the men of the 27th. Such acts by you and your friends today are shaping our world of tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Goodbye, My Fancy, starring Rosalind Russell as Agatha and Robert Young as Jim, with Whitfield Connor as Matt. <laughs> if 
Tonight's the following morning, and the motion picture theater at Good Hope College is rapidly filling with students and faculty. In front of the theater, Matt Cole has just walked over the, to the student advisor, Miss Shackleford. My, you look just radiant this morning, Miss Shackleford. Oh, why, Mr. Cole. So you're showing the movie, huh? Eh? Sort of a flexible program you run up here, isn't it? It's completely beyond me. Last night, Dr. Merrill tells me to cancel the film, and this morning he says to go ahead. Dr. Merrill ordered the film shown. Well, it's not my responsibility. Oh, I'll certainly be glad when this weekend's over. Why? No, are you all alone, Woody? Isn't the Honorable going to show up? The film's about to begin. Now listen, out of focus. Merrill came through, didn't he? They're running her picture, aren't they? You know what that does to your chances? Oh, well. Then what are you so happy about? Oh, I'm not happy. I'm sad. You've got to be philosophical about it. You've got to take the bad with the good. See, you're up, you're down. You're punch drunk. Coming in? No, I've seen the picture. I think I'll take one last happy look at Good Hope. I might run into an old friend. No, a man can wear himself out walking around this campus looking for someone. What are you doing here, Matt? What are you doing here, Agatha? I happen to like the amphitheater. Well, they're showing your film. I know. Well, aren't you glad? Yes, yes, of course. Well, it seems I was wrong about Merrill. Fine, fine, but there's no need to Do carry on about pro? it. Oh, no, I don't mind. I don't have any pride where you're concerned, Aggie. You ought to know that. Uh, we've been all through this, Matt. You've got nothing to say to me. It's huh? all been said. Yeah, but I'm stupid. i got to have it spelled out. He's a great guy. He's everything you ever hoped for, dreamed about all these years. And you're going to marry him? Uh, Is I, that I, it? I don't want to talk about okay, it. Okay, I'll go down and congratulate Dr. Merrill. Uh, Matt! No, you couldn't face that, could you? As you know, it's a lie. You threw away six years we could have had together. Six wonderful, beautiful years, all because of a lie, but you haven't got honesty enough to admit it. So me or yourself. Gotta hang on to your precious ego. Well, you can have it, sister. I'm a big boy now. I got bigger and better things to do. And don't worry, I'll stay away from Merrill. Agatha? Come in, Jim. You're not packing. That's right, Jim. I'm leaving. My commencement speech is there on the waist back. If I had to stand up there this afternoon and say it, I'd choke on every word. But don't you realize... You can say that I was taken ill, that I was called back to Washington, anything. Just like 20 years ago, isn't it? Running away again. Jim, I was wrong about last night, expecting you to be the same man I remembered. And I was wrong to think that I could, well, could help you win your daughter back. I can't blackmail for you for the rest of my life. It's better that she know the truth now while she's young. Would you tell Jenny that? That I ordered your film shown because if I didn't... If I had to, yes, I'd tell her. <laughs> Who is it? It's Jenny, Miss Reed. Come in, Jenny. I went to your office, Father. They told me you'd come here. We just saw your picture, Miss Reed. Oh, it was wonderful. I wish you'd been there, Father. I'm sure none of us will ever forget it. It was the best graduation present you could have given the senior class and me. Well, I just wanted to thank you. Jenny, don't go. Yes? You, uh, kissed me just now, Jenny. You haven't done that in a long time. I'm very grateful. But I can't accept it under false pretenses. False pretenses? And Jim, no, don't... I had the movie shown only because Miss Reed forced me to. She gave me an alternative that left me no choice. <laughs> That's the truth, and I want you to know it. <laughs> I, uh, haven't been much of a father for quite a while. I'm sorry, Jenny. I didn't tell you all this to hurt you. You've forgotten a lot of things about me, haven't you? That I don't cry only when I'm sad. That I cry just as much when I'm happy. I don't care why you showed the film. I just wanted you to be honest with me and with yourself. Oh, so this is where you are. Ellie, uh, do you mind? It's all right. Come in, Ellen. Now, what is all this nonsense, Jim? Claude's terribly upset. The whole board's upset. First when they heard about the movie, and then right out of the blue, this... this resignation. Resignation? Oh, it was just beautiful, Jim. Especially that part about self-respect. It... it just about made me cry. Jim, why did you do it? I stood in back of the theater a little while ago and watched them looking at the picture. Suddenly I realized I had almost not let them see it. That's when I knew that everything you said last night was true. That I had no right to be the president of a college. Why, Aggie, 
How could you say such a thing? Why, you should hear them all shouting back there at home about how much good you've done for the school. And what a row the students would raise if they heard about it, wouldn't they, Jenny? They'd raise a heck of a row, Mrs. Driscoll. Why, I... I'd even resign as alumni president. Thank you, Ellen. Oh, my goodness, Jimmy. Now, what are you doing here? You forget it's commencement. I'm going, Mrs. Griswold. I always wondered why they called it commencement. Now I know. Well, I'd better be leaving, too. I just wanted to ask you to reconsider, Jim. Oh, you, you won't mention this to Claude, will you? He'll like thinking it was his own idea. It's very important to a man like Claude, you know, to think everything was his own idea. I'm afraid I've been underestimating you, Ellen. You forget. I was once a student in your history class, too. See you later, Aggie. I'm overwhelmed, Jim. I never expected this. We're even, neither did I. Will you reconsider? I think it's very important to good hope that you stay on. When I came in here, I wanted to tell you again how much I love you. That I didn't have much hope for it after last night. But that somehow, today, I know we're different people than we were 20 years ago. I know that a lot of things have changed. But I wouldn't want to go through the rest of my life feeling I hadn't tried. Do I have a chance? You might have had a very good chance, Jim. Except that, well, you see, we only met today. Just now, really. And there's someone who has a few years start on you. Uh, he's lucky. Thank you. You will stay, won't you, for commencement, I mean? Yes. Yes, I'll stay. Thank you, Agatha. Well, hello. Hello? Uh, I mean, Agatha. Oh, well, where have you been? <laughs> where have I been? Where have you been? Straightening out my life. Well, now I know. Now, what arrangements did you make for getting us out of here? Getting us out? Well, not, not, not by plane, Woody, tonight. You better phone Washington. Tell him to set up that committee meeting for 10 tomorrow morning. Oh, and call Senator McElroy. Tell him he was right. I'll make a swing through the whole state before election. And close your mouth. You look like a fish. <laughs> well, I thought you and Merrill... Well, now, get on that phone. I've got to go change my shoes. <sighs> Uh, hello, this is Miss Woods. Would you get me the airport, please? All right, Woody, where's the Honorable? Oh, look, Cole, would you mind telling me something? What's going on? All right, I'll hold on. Mera runs the film, you're philosophical, and she straightens out her life. I don't get it. You will. Oh, Woody, my black shoes, where on earth did you put... Well, I thought you were on your way to bigger and better things. I've got some news for hello? you. Leave us alone, uh, Woody. But I, I just said leave us alone. Oh, I'll call you later. You're not going to do it, Aggie. You're not going to marry him. Oh, really? Now, look. I'm not asking you to fall into my arms. I wouldn't even catch you if you did. <laughs> One thing I found out this weekend, I don't like women. Well, then why all the bother? Because I'm neat. I straighten pictures. I put the tops on toothpaste tubes. I don't like unfinished things lying around. Now, you're not going to go through with this and throw away your life. Aren't you being a little overconfident? I don't think so. I'm offering you a deal, a business deal. And in exchange for such a small service, I'm giving you my personal guarantee that the article in Real Magazine won't even hint at the colorful events leading up to your expulsion from this seat of higher learning. Why, you... See pictures on opposite page. Oh, you're an eavesdropper, too, among all your other accomplices. You'll learn a lot of cute tricks in my work, too. Ah, uh, well, it seems I have no choice, have I? Woody! Yes, ma'am? There's been a change of plans, Woody. We're leaving Good Hope tonight. Huh? You'd better phone Washington. Uh, they can set up that committee meeting for tomorrow at 10. Oh, and call Senator McElroy. Tell him I'll make a swing through the entire state before election. But you just told me. I him. know, but there's been a change in plans. Oh, a change in plans. Miss Reed, Miss Reed, are you ready? Jimmy, the ceremonies are going to begin. Well, I, I, I guess I'm ready. Uh, your speech, have you got your speech? speech? I left it right here on the desk. What did you do with it? I never touched I it. I just think I remember What's that in the wastebasket? Oh. Uh, we had no file. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, now, come on, let's go. Jenny, Jenny, where are you? Oh, one weekend. Could a woman go crazy in one weekend? What's so crazy about changing her mind? Changing her mind? She told me the same thing five minutes ago. She what? She what? What do they put in the food around here, anyway? <laughs> now, what's got into you? Sweetheart, don't even try to understand it. Just relax and enjoy it. What kept you? Oh, Matt, you were right. We have missed six wonderful years. I've been so blind. Now, why on earth didn't you make me see? Why didn't I? 
You, you politician, you. In a moment, our stars will return. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind as many another American has. Ever heard of Billy Brown? Well, for over a year now, young Billy, a high school senior of Yorktown Heights, New York, has broadcast a 15-minute program over the voice of America. Every Friday, in answer to some letter from a pen pal, he talks about such varied subjects as sports, stamps, religious freedom, and American jazz. The program is repeated in Urdu, a language spoken in India and Pakistan, and beamed to Asia. In one month, Billy answered 627 letters from 35 countries. When one pen pal asked about student government in American high schools, Billy tape recorded a five-minute student meeting in his school. For a while, it looked as if Billy's program might be discontinued, but it had become so successful that the local Rotary Club set up a special committee to raise funds for its continuation and for the purchase of postage and stationery so Billy could continue to correspond personally with his overseas pen pals. Recently, Pakistan's ambassador to the U.S. and his family visited Billy at his home for a weekend. And later, the envoy invited the Brown family to Washington, where Billy received a reward for his, as the citation read, contribution to the growing spirit of brotherhood between the youth of America and the youth of Pakistan. Although Billy Brown plans to enter law school, he hopes to continue with his radio program, for, like so many other Americans, he's discovered that by helping others, you help your country. Now, here's Mr. Cummings with our stars. And here they are, Rosalind Russell and Robert Young. Now, Irene, tell us about your plans. One of the most beautiful love stories of all time. The world-famous novel by Emily Bronte, which Samuel Goldwyn turns into an artistic trial as a great motion picture, Wuthering Heights. And we are proud to announce that lovely Merle Oberon will recreate a well-remembered portrayal of Kathy. Well, that will certainly get you off to a great start. Good night. Good night. Good night. Heard in our cast tonight were Joan Banks as Woody, Norma Jean Nelson as Ginny, Herb Butterfield as Mr. Griswold, Fred Mackay as Dr. Pitt, Pauline Drake as Ellen, Gail Barney as Miss Shackelford, and Eddie Marr. The Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings. Our orchestra is under the direction of Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to join us next week at this same time for another presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater. Theater is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.